Welcome to A Double, Double, and Dice, with your host Kim, and Jocelyn. Pour your favorite beverage, pull up a comfy chair, because we are ready to roll. Welcome to episode 86 of A Double, Double, and Dice, and today we're going to do a female character in Dice Masters, because we haven't done one in a while, and we've picked one directly from Secret Wars. This is what we've done. This is the way. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong podcast, Kim. No, but I wanted to say it anyways. May 4th wasn't that far long ago. <laughs> it was not. It was not that long ago at the time of this recording. So Correct. Um, so yeah, so we have picked a character that has never been dice mastered before. Correct. And we are going to dazzle you with our knowledge. <laughs> See what you did there? See what I did there? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> uh, so we have picked uh, Dazzler. For today's female character in Dice Masters episode. And uh, this is the, as Kim mentioned, a character from Secret Wars, Dazzler. This is the first time that Dazzler has ever been Dice Mastered. So mm -hmm. we only have the one um, set that she's in, Marvel Secret Wars. She has three rarities. Mm -hmm. I say, which sounds like a question mark, but it actually mm -hmm. isn't. But... <laughs> Um, three rarities, three. and uh, we're going to learn a little bit about Dazzler today. But first, I want to put a thank you out there to a uh, regular listener and friend of the podcast, Red Mage, who assisted me with this research. Um, so uh, thanks, Red Mage, for, for sending that along and helping me out here. Um, I will probably butcher it anyway. <laughs> so... <laughs> Sincerest apologies in advance. Um, there was quite a lot of content that was shared with me, which I really do appreciate, uh, but I didn't have time to read all of it. Uh, so we're going to kind of get into uh, the nuts and bolts and, and do the best we can here with uh, our friend Dazzler. How does that sound, Kim? Sounds good. I'm sure we'll have a train wreck episode. Who knows? <laughs> well, maybe it's not going to be that bad. So first off, um, Dazzler's real name is Allison or Allie Blair. Uh, if you're interested, she is five foot eight feet tall, and I'm not going to share her weight because I just don't understand why that's necessary. Um, she has blue eyes and blonde hair, and she's a former songstress and an actress, and she's been affiliated with a number of groups in her time, including X-Men, um, Rebels of the Mojoverse, Gladiators, A-Force, Excalibur, Shield, the X-Men in the Multiverse, the X-Men Street Team, and Elm Street Nightmares, and in Dice Masters, Spider-Man Affiliation. Which is weird. Okay. <laughs> um, so what? Uh, what's the deal with Dazzler? Uh, so Dazzler... She doesn't dazzle? <laughs> well, she does. Do we want to talk about her, um, her powers first? Or do we want to get into sort of like an overview of her as a character? Well, we could do overview first. All right. So um, Dazzler is the... Uh, or Allison Blair is the daughter of Carter Blair and his wife Catherine. And when they were married, Carter was studying to become a lawyer, and Catherine helped him with the money that she earned as a jazz singer. When their daughter was born, Carter assumed that his wife would stop singing and stay home. However, Catherine had no intention to do so. Um, eventually, Catherine uh, left Carter and not, didn't want her daughter to live up in such a strained atmosphere. So Carter and his mother, Bella, then raised little Allison, um, and then her mother was never brought up in all these years. Uh, as many teenagers do, Allison loved music and dreamed of becoming a professional singer. She kept practicing her dancing and performing in her room, much to her father's anger. He wanted his daughter to follow his footsteps and become a lawyer and blamed the loud music for the headaches that Allison was experiencing during puberty. When her high school was holding a, a talent contest, uh, he forbade his daughter to attend, but Allison's grandmother, Bella, settled things with him and she went to the high school dance. When it's finally her turn and she was handed the microphone, the crowd was not only impressed by her beautiful voice, but also by the marvelous light show. All present thought it was part of the equipment. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically uh, what this is telling us is that um, Dazzler, a.k.a. Allison Blair, had become a mutant during puberty, which is when that happens. And um, what... Uh, her her mutant power um, uh, allowed her to project lights which sounds kind of like lame right mm, not really it's very it's very cool. like it's very uh 
performance oriented, which is what she wanted to do. But when you learn a little bit more about her powers, what you learn is that she's actually absorbing and storing sound and the sonic vibrations within her body. And then her body converts them into light emissions. So as she learned how to control them, she can release them in different ways. So when she was performing her song in the talent show in high school, um, it was just happening, I guess, naturally. Her body was just doing the thing. But as she got older and she got better at understanding and controlling her powers, she could convert them into different ways t- that they were emitted from her, which included different things like concentrated labor me- beams. I can't talk. Laser beams. Photon pulses. Force fields that can deflect or obliterate projectiles. Ambient light that clouds her environment. Realistic three-dimensional holograms. Solid light constructs thrust for limited f- flight and a glow from her body that can illuminate her surroundings and infect others by blinding them which can render them you know incapacitated or produce a hypnotic effect to place them in a trance or manipulate their emotional mood wow so it's actually kind of a kind of a neat power to have you're absorbing sounds and, and vibrations and converting them into energy that comes out as light um, she was also afflicted with a mysterious resurrection factor, which prevented her from being killed. So, hmm. uh, so that's kind of the high level of, of Dazzler. And, uh, just speaking just generally about specifically her time in, uh, Secret Wars. Um, so for those of you that haven't read Secret Wars, spoilers, uh, <laughs> when the multiverse was destroyed... And the remnants reassembled on the partitioned battle world. I think we've talked about this before on the podcast. I think so, yeah. Um, There was an island kingdom contained within a vast set of walls known as Arcadia. This island paradise was largely ruled and overseen by female superheroes, counted on by a group of superheroines known as A-Force to protect it and patrol its borders. A version of Dazzler was one of these heroines. Through some enchantment, this version of Dazzler was able to fly. So we talked about her powers allowing her to give her like a limited amount of thrust, which stimulated flying, but in battle world, she can actually fly. Um, When Arcadia came under attack from within because of a traitor in their midst, uh, extra dimensional beings started appearing within its walls. One of these beings was a cosmic entity known as Singularity that took the form of a young girl. Singularity was so inspired by the heroes of Arcadia that when their kingdom came under attack by a horde of the undead, she sacrificed herself to purge the island nation of its undead invasion. Dazzler and the other heroes were touched by her sacrifice. Unfortunately for them, their kingdom, along with all of Battleworld, soon came to an end when the multiverse was reborn, though Singularity managed to find her way back to Earth Prime, which is, I think Earth Prime is Earth 616. I think so, yeah. Um, but I could be wrong, because why would we they spell it Earth 616? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so there's there's all sorts of little different versions of Dazzler, just like there are for most comic book heroes <laughs> and villains. Um, but, uh, you know, she liked to sing. That was one of the things she did. She liked to perform. And at uh, one point, she had a band. And her band was called Lightbringer. Uh, that was one of the, the versions that we have of Dazzler. Um, and she was also in, in one of the different alternate realities. She was one of the X baby babies created by Mojo from Neoplasm to replace the original X-Men. And uh, Mojo was going to destroy them, but the X babies escaped alongside Mojo's pilot Ricochet Rita. So there's all kinds of different versions of Dazzler, but generally they all had similar powers, which were all around absorbing sound and uh, vibrations and turning them into light pretty cool yeah so that's that's kind of it um that we have for dazzler there's not a a heck of a lot to share i mean she's a very storied um x-men there have been comic book series specifically around dazzler but in secret wars she was just primarily a member of that a-force on arcadia okay so she didn't really have a big role during secret wars then she did not yeah she did not i found my lightbringer page um, so Lightbringer was the band and, uh, the band promoted inclusion and acceptance within populations of genetic minorities, including mutants and inhumans. And, uh, 
her counterpart, Allison Blair, who was from a different Earth, Earth 15513, um, had a had a hammer, Kim. Uh-huh. Which was called Lightbringer. So there is a potential link there between the name of her band and her counterpart's magical hammer. Um, and her counterpart had a magical hammer because she was a member of Thor Corp. Thor Corp. Exactly. Thor Corp so, or Thor Corp? Th- Thor Corp, right? The the P is silent. So it's Thor Corp. Thor Corp. Oh, really? But it's spelled hmm. with a P. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it is the Thor Corp. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's sort of a little bit about Dazzler. Um, I understand that if I dig much deeper, there is, um, some negativity associated with Dazzler so that, (laughs) you know, it's not, not the greatest thing. We talked a little bit about like her relationship with her dad and, and that, but there's some other deeper, darker things that we don't need to get into on the podcast. Um, and also she is not a doctor. (laughs) <laughs> unlike many what was of her profession the, she was a singer songwriter actress. Oh, okay that's right yeah that's right um yeah. so she was not a doctor unlike many of the other people that we've had on the podcast people we've had on the podcast yeah this is dazzler hi dazzler you're not a doctor she no. um no she like many of the other characters we've talked about on the podcast so hopefully i didn't butcher that too badly no well we had a good source, so we had a good source. I think how I relayed the information was not the greatest, <laughs> but um, we will we will take it. So please let us know what your thoughts are on Dazzler. Do you have a favorite Dazzler run? Uh, did you enjoy the five approximate pages of Dazzler and Secret Wars as member of the A Force? Do you remember that part of the story? <laughs> um, and uh, let's jump into her cards. All right, now you s- her art is from the comic book right yes i have that information card art comes from number three of the a force okay so uh book three of a force uh that book is mostly about she hulk and dazzler is just around on the team but that's where the art comes from so not directly from secret wars uh that would be from secret wars yes oh okay yeah okay yeah it's a secret wars version issue issue (laughs) issue that's the word i was looking for yeah okay (laughs) I see. How many? I wonder how many there were of Secret Wars. Well, there was Secret Wars in 1985, and then there was Secret Wars in 2015. I know we had this discussion, but you know my memory. There are a lot of issues. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but the one about A Force number three is the one where the art comes from. So again, gotcha. thanks to Red Mage for providing me this content that I can butcher for all of you. <laughs> so as we said, she only has three cards in the set. Um, A common, an uncommon, and a rare. Her um, common is called Lightbringer. Just like the band. Mm -hmm. And she's a, that is a three cost bolt. She's a bolt across the board. Uh, She's affiliated with X-Men and Spider-Man. So both affiliations. And her common reads, when fielded, deal four damage to target mask character die. Okay. It's very specific. Very specific, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's okay because you never know what people bring, right? So you can't really predict if people are going to bring a lot of mass characters or not. But I mean, four damage is good, but it's yeah, it is very specific. It's very specific, but there's a lot of that in um, there's a lot of that in Secret Wars where the it's very specific. Yeah, with um, um, energy types. Dazzler guest starred in Marvel titles, including The Amazing Spider-Man. So that's why maybe she's Spider-affiliated. Mm-hmm. So she's got some uh, spider friends, I guess. Who doesn't have spider friends, really? I know. Who doesn't? <laughs> um, so he, he four damage to target mask character die. So, mm-hmm. I mean, if you have a mask character die, that's good. Um, four damage is a lot for a when fielded effect on a three cost that has a yep. fielding a fielding cost of zero one two, um, so the upper level's not the greatest, right? Right. Her, her what top is her level? stats? Yeah. So she's a two one, a one three three, and two three four. Yeah. Her die image is very similar to Jubilee, um, and her die in in the set is actually really pretty. It's got like glitter in it. 
Yeah. Oh, I never person. realized that her die looks like Jubilee, actually. Yeah, it's similar to a Jubilee die. But the stats are slightly different, I think. Yeah. Um so yeah, so I like I don't know what, what mask characters would we would we want to try yeah, no, for who's... damage to like let's just look in set. So in Secret Wars set? Yeah. We look at Secret Wars Masked and we look at characters. energy and we look at mask. Um what do we got? isn't much. Captain Britain Black Panther, Black Panther. Goddess of Thunder. Yeah. So she's she got her defenses and yeah. she is like the common goddess of thunder is, is kind of annoying in set because she gets plus five attack when you have another character with Thor in the name or side title. So she gets really big on the attack side, but her defense side's one, two, two, so it's pretty mm -hmm. easy to KO her. She's got some one field effect, so it is a good way to KO her to bring her back around. Um Goddess of Thunder. No, Goddess of Thunder. Like if you were gonna use it on on if you, oh your if own you character. were gonna use it yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right because it doesn't specifically say opponent so or opposing so it can be any character die yeah or any die invisible woman has a two three defense on her level one and level two so a, a fielding of dazzler would ko her mm -hmm. and um, her also... super rare is pretty good so again you would want to ko her to bring her back around um the other thing that is it is uh is interesting about this is a lot of the times when you have something that is when fielded like dazzler is and it doesn't have a may right it says you must mm -hmm. when field when fielded deal four damage there's no may about it right um if it just a target character die she'd have to do it to herself if nobody else was active right the fact that it's target mass character die you can't do it to a sidekick you've got to stick with that mass character die Hopefully your opponent has one, otherwise you're KOing one, oh, one, KOing one of your own, or not KOing one at all if there is no mask. True. But she won't KO herself. No, because she's a bolt. And I'm guessing there's nothing in this set that gives... No, nothing like really that gives masks, do they? <laughs> I don't think I don't they really think made that yet, that eh? Energy. Yeah. No, they haven't hey. made that yet. Hey, WizKids. I know, right? Kim has an idea. <laughs> Let's talk. Um, okay, so that is uh, Lightbringer, mm -hmm. the common. What's the next one? Her uncommon is Mojoverse Rebel, so which oh, we've talked about. Because she was an ex-babies. Yes. I saw such a funny name, ex-babies. It reminds <laughs> me of um, Muppet Babies. Yes, I know. Muppet Babies. <laughs> you don't know the song. I don't know the lyrics. I know, uh, I know the tune, and I know the Muppet Babies, and that's it. Doing a thing you do when you're then then oh, so anyways uh, when fielded <laughs> deal four damage to target character die that has no team affiliation a little better I mean a little better and that is not quite as specific as mask but no team affiliation is also yes. a hard one to come by is, in the set I, mean, I think ah uh, there's stuff in the set that doesn't have team affiliation for sure. Like yeah. there's there is stuff, and I mean, you know, think about, I mean, it's not really a defense, but a token doesn't have a team affiliation. So when fielded, you get to deal four damage to a, a sentinel token, <laughs> yeah, a sentinel token. token that won't be KO'd by it because it needs five <laughs> damage to die. You gotta um, hit it with one more damage of some sort. You gotta field two of her. Yeah. 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 I'm busy. And I'm... That's a lot of effort to KO a single sentinel token. <laughs> And it's a three, because she's a three cost as well there. Yeah. So. And that one has a, a max three dice. Yes. Interestingly. Whereas yeah. the first one had a max four dice. I'm just double checking the art. Yeah, it is max three. Very interesting. Um, and her last one is her name, Allison Blair. It's a two cost. Uh, this is her rare version. While you have an active character die with cost four or greater... Dazzler's Fear Field. Oh, with her third fielding cost here. I don't know. Yes, that will work. Um, when fielded, deal two damage to target non bolt character die. I kind of think that might be the best one. Yeah. A, because that cost. at least over all psychics. <laughs> at least three other energy. Right? Yeah. I mean, you, you need to have something 
and like an active character with a cost of four or more. Yeah. But there's lots of those available, and four four energies get to like a pretty effective die right now. Like, let's just take a look in set at Secret Wars. And that's a two cost, so that's pretty cheap. Yeah. And fields for free, which is great because, you know. Yeah, there's spo two spoilers. That two on the level three is kind of hard. Like, yeah. look, okay, so Colossus Inferno, which is the um, the common, no text. So the blank, yeah. The blank, it's a four cost, and it's got one four four one six five two seven seven. That would be a good die to have in your field. Mm hmm Right? There's probably something better that it pairs with that I'm not thinking about, but but uh, just, you know, top of the mind here. You've got Spider-Man, the rare Spider-Man. This this could actually be a good good partner, partnering because he's a four-cost fist. He has Avengers and Spider-Man affiliation. And he has Team Watch, prep a die from your bag. So if you have Spider-Man active, 033144155, He's active. He's a four cost. You field Allison Blair Dazzler, who is free to field because you have a character die with a cost of four or more. They have the same affiliation, so then you get to deal the team watch effect, uh, effect which you draw and prep a die from your bag. Mm -hmm. Is it the winning, the winning combo that's that's going to get you to uh, Worlds this year? No. <laughs> but you know, it, it might come around in drafts. It's a fun, know. fun casual build. <laughs> It's a fun casual build. Yeah, it's a fun casual build. So, so yeah, there's there's stuff, um, but I think that's probably the best one, as far as that goes. What do you think, Kim? Yeah, I mean, I like the dealing the four damage. I think that's that's good. Like, I like that. Like, just doing two, four damage two, is none. A lot. Okay. I mean, maybe if she was more, maybe it was a four cost when field deal four damage to target non bolt character die because four seems to be her thing going in and all of a sudden it's two <laughs> you know what i mean but yeah, if she's only a two cost you can buy her for super cheap and if she's yeah. free to field that's good and she's got max four dice on that one yep yeah so, so it'd be really easy to get lots of those and then pair her up with someone to team watch there's lots of team watch in set whether it's x-men or spider-man and then you can get team watch effects to trigger your new favorite keyword Hashtag team watch forever. <laughs> not no, I'm still working, anymore. <laughs> I'm still working on recruit. Oh yeah, it's recruit. Recruit not has a thing. It's yeah. it's gonna happen. I yeah. have faith. Yeah, Jonathan's gonna bring it to worlds. Look out. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Here comes recruit. <laughs> so let us know what you think of Dazzler. Have you played with any of her cards in your Secret Wars drafts? Have you got built any teams around her? Is the Spider Man team watch the way to go? What do you think? Four damage to something versus two damage to a non-bolt? Let us know what you think. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I... In our draft... I know you played with her in one of our drafts. Probably. I don't think I've put her on my team yet. Was that last week? When we drafted an entire display? No, I swear it was before when we had Rob out. Maybe. Because I was sitting to your left and I remember I'm like, oh, look, what's that pukey looking guy? <laughs> Pukey looking. That's are you, are you thinking of Agent Brand? No, I was talking about Dazzler, and you're like, no, look at the sparkly sparkles in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's a little, a pretty it's guy. a little like greeny yellow, but I think it's pretty. <laughs> it's okay, Dazzler. You're pretty to me. <laughs> You've dazzled Jocelyn. That's right. Um. So yeah. So anything else on Dazzler, Kim? Uh, no. No. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, jump into the news. News, news, news. We don't have anything for news. Are you talking about the dice bag or just news? No, I'm talking about news. Breaking news, everyone. It's breaking not really breaking news. news by the time this comes out, but. No. But breaking news at the time we recorded it. <laughs> That's um, correct. There was one sentence in an article that was kids posted. I think it was just one sentence. Uh, in an article that was titled Heroclix and Onslaught. <laughs> what is oh. Onslaught? That, that's another game of theirs, right? Yeah, it's the game yeah, they've yeah. been pushing okay. this year. It's the new mm -hmm. like Dungeons and Dragons -y game. Right. So, uh, let's see. I'm pulling it up here. So, it says uh, 
Dice Masters players will have their world championships at Gen Con this year. It's two sentences. <laughs> Details for that event will be shared alongside all of our other Gen Con info. So the article that WizKids posted on May 8th said, Save the dates 2023 HeroClix World Championship, Team World Championship, and D&D Onslaught World Championship. And in that article, there was that two sentence two sentence announcement dice masters players will have their world championships at gen con this year details for that event will be shared alongside all of our other gen con info i'm repeating it again because i'm trying to make it sound more important i'm trying to find like <laughs> hidden meaning is there something like uh, veiled in here and i bet you two weeks before the event is when you're gonna hear all the information no with gen con they're gonna have to put it out soon so um, Gen Con is August 3rd through 6th in Indianapolis, Indiana. And Gen Con tickets have been available for months. And uh, the hotel blocks, are, especially the downtown ones, um, are probably all sold out at this point. There are not enough hotel rooms downtown to support the convention. Because Gen Con is the second largest gaming convention in the world. Uh, the first largest being Essenspiel in Germany. And then Gen Con is second. Last year, there were approximately 50,000 people that attended Gen Con. And they're expecting probably a similar number for this year. So, um, and right now they're in the process of launching all the events. So the event listing went live on May 7th. There are still events being added. And then how it works with Gen Con is you create like a wish list, Kim, of okay. all the things you want to do. And then the wish list, you can start submitting them on May 21st. And it's sort of like it puts you into like a queue and um, you put all the events that you want to go on and, it, and then it gives you a message to say, hey, your wish list has been reviewed. Here's the events you got. Here's the events you missed. And then you get to pick which ones you stick in, uh, which ones you stick with and, and purchase and which ones you send back and say, no, I don't want these. And you open them up for someone else. And then after that stops like there's still an opportunity for people to add events and people to join events but the big amount of eventing happens starting on may 21st so um whiz kids is going to have to launch that information pretty soon and i think i looked it up that last year they did a gen con post i think it was on may 11th gen con whiz did they have kids. drafting at gen con last year yeah so last year they did um here it is. Uh, so May 12th, they know, they posted it last year. So last year they did uh, Heroclix Nationals. They did Heroclix Battle Royales, Heroclix Learn to Play. They did some Onslaught demos, I think, if I remember correctly, because the game wasn't out yet. And then they did a special Heroclix, what they called a three-month organized play event in an afternoon. And then for Dice Masters, they had a modern event every day, and they had drafts every day. Okay. And that was what they had at Gen Con last year. And that was the weekend, right? Yeah, so it's Their the 3rd okay. through the 6th, I think, of August. Just double-checking. Yeah, so it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they were running... I think for Dice Masters, they did like three drafts a day plus one constructed event per day. But the constructed event wasn't like a tournament or anything like that. It was just like a come in and play a game and you're done. So it was just like a one-off. Um, and uh, the drafts were the biggest draw. And they did the three per day that were kind of scheduled because that's like a Gen Con thing. They schedule stuff and it's supposed to be at the same time every day to create consistency for people. Um, but they would fire off extras if they had time and products and people. Okay. So, so yeah, so it's sometime after we've recorded this, we will hear from WizKids about their Gen Con plans. And, and I know that they're holding um, U.S. Nationals Hero Clicks at Gen Con. And I'm sure they're probably doing something with Onslaught. And they've announced that that's where Dice Masters Worlds is going to be. So if you want to play in Dice Masters Worlds this year, uh, Memphis is not where you're going, Kim. No. <laughs> but we talked about these dates, too. I was very thinking about going to Gen Con. But when I saw the date, I cannot. 
So. You know, Gen Con announced this date over a year ago. I don't look at these things <laughs> until like the time Too late. Up. But I think it always falls on this weekend, right? I don't know. Yeah, it's always. Or does it, it, change? Se- it seems to always. Well, always in the two years that I've been paying attention to Gen Con, Kim, <laughs> it's been on this weekend, the first weekend in August. Yeah. So. So if you want to play in Dice Masters Worlds, uh, start booking your holidays, looking at flights, and trying to find yourself some kind of hotel accommodations or an Airbnb of some sort, because Dice Masters is coming to Gen Con. So that means they won't have nationals then? We don't know that for certain, but I'm going to say probably that's correct. Because WizKids has not announced anything about Origins, it looks like their convention season is starting at San Diego Comic-Con in July. And then they're going to be at Gen Con. They've announced Memphis. And I think they announced PAX, yes, PAX they did. Unplugged. Yeah. But the dates for PAX Unplugged haven't been announced yet. They're usually in December. so. And that's um, during winter time. <laughs> yeah. Go to Philadelphia in winter time, friends. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, more information to follow. Uh, and uh, keep your eyes glued to the WizKids website and also all of our eagle-eyed friends in the Discord. It's all over the Discord. <laughs> yeah, and it's on Facebook too, but I think most of the yeah. conversation is happening on Discord. Yep. Speaking of Discord, Kim, mm-hmm. that's where we get most of our feedback from the dice bag these days. Yeah. Before we jump into the dice bag, though, mm-hmm. I do have something fresh off the boat to announce. Fresh off the boat. Yeah, because did you get the some day more, of this did you recording. Get more dice masters? <laughs> the day of this recording. Um we're putting back on two team takedown. Dun dun dun. And this one is a modern no bands. Play whatever you want. And this is probably a good way to test those teams out for worlds. Which is supposedly happening in August. At Gen Con. <laughs> so if you want to test teams modern build uh no bands so go out all, all out i guess um we are holding a two-team takedown it starts on may 29th uh article has gone out everything is out so visit our website at dm-north.com and it's all over discord uh take a look and read through and sign up and come play it's over well, four weeks so it'll be a month of pretty much the month of june um, and then you play your one opponent every week, and then you have two teams, and you must win by two. Um, sorry, you must win both teams to win. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, you get it. You got it. You're there. <laughs> you got it. You got to win with both teams to win yeah, the round. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Um, and of course, you can't have the same cards on both teams, um, which might be a little bit harder build for you if you're trying to look for like teams that are competitive. But still, at least you can find maybe some gems. Well, I mean, we have a whole new set now that we didn't have mm-hmm. the last time we played a No Holds bar- Barred Modern with Marvel Secret Wars, which has come with, you know, new tools and new mechanics and epic basic actions and, Epic you know, basic action. Yep. I, uh, if you haven't listened to uh, the recent episode of The Ministry of Dice from our friends Chris and Andy over, over there in uh, the UK, they had just did a whole episode about epic basic actions. So, something to consider. Yeah, so it should be very interesting to see what people mix with the new set. It'll be also be very interesting if WizKids announce a ba- is, announces a ban. Because last mm. year, they put Master Mold and Less Sentinels on a watch list. Yeah. And then it dominated the U.S. Nationals and World Championships at Memphis. And we haven't heard anything about it since. So it would be interesting to see if they're going to ban that because it's it's really good. So. Yeah, and I don't think anything really in the new set would, does anything for tokens, right? No. I haven't read everything yet. Nothing that so. I've seen is is a good a token, token killer. killer. <laughs> so, but um, it'll be interesting to see if they ban it or if it stays in, if it's going to be another event full of master molds or if people are going to find new ways to do things with the new set so it'll be interesting to see mm-hmm. so yeah so that's coming up and then you have a weekly dice arena that happens every tuesday at nine o'clock eastern and the uk games expo is happening sometime in july 
first August. weekend in June. <laughs> I don't remember. What is wrong with me? Every week, Kim. Every two weeks? Every two weeks. Kim. <laughs> Every two weeks, Kim, I remind you about the UK Games Expo. And, and every two weeks, I forget about the event dates. <laughs> First weekend in June. If you're going to be in the UK, head over to the UK Games Expo. If you are going to the UK Games Expo and you do plan to play Dice Masters, please go and register and buy your ticket now because Chris and Andy are a little concerned that they don't have enough signups. And there's a possibility, a slim possibility, but a possibility that uh, you might lose your table. So if you're intending to go to the UK Games Expo to play Dice Masters, head over and buy your ticket. So I'm guessing you have to have a certain amount of people to keep your table, I guess? Well, they were talking about it on the podcast that came out the week of this recording. And they just said that, um, you know, if there aren't enough tickets for your event and other events are being oversold or there's extra demand, they might say, hey, you don't have enough folks to keep this table and we're going to give this table to another event. I see. So. Because, you know, they're a business and they're there to make money. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, but I know there's going to be lots of folks, folks that want to play. So head over there. Just buy your ticket, friends. Make the UK Games Expo a fantastic event. WizKids has announced that they're going to be there at a booth. So you'll be able to talk to someone from WizKids. I don't know who it'll be. I do not know who WizKids is sending to England. But um, you don't have you know, a base they, there? I don't know. I'm assuming mm -hmm. someone from New Jersey is going to end up in England. But uh, yeah, so I'm not sure who they're sending, but they, their WizKids will be there. There'll be a booth. You can probably learn to play Onslaught. <laughs> is that a miniatures game? I have no idea. It is a miniatures game. Hmm. Yeah, it's a miniatures game. Okay. All right. So. Dice now bag? we get into the dice bag. <laughs> Speaking of Discord, that worked better before Kim interrupted me. Um, so most of the feedback we get for the dice bag these days is coming from Discord, and it's coming from our DM North TV Discord uh, group channel, whatever we call it. We have a double double and dice podcast convo channel there on our DM North TV Discord, and we heard from Collector Rob, and he says, "I must confess to smelling at least <laughs> one of the draft packs. It's got to be done." Uh, it's hilarious um, and uh, so that's uh, so that's that now we, we had that's collector Rob weighing in on smelling draft packs now we've also heard uh, comics Mike say I do smell lots of different things like books in my pillow <laughs> but he's never sniffed his cards wait lots what? of different things like books and my pillow Okay, remember I said books on my pillow. <laughs> just like, what? Don't you have books on your pillow, Kim? <laughs> mm. And then Jack Lopes Bam, uh, a.k.a. Nick, followed up with, now I'm feeling peer pressure to smell my next pack. So Nick, did you smell a pack? That's what we need to know. Inquiring mm -hmm. minds want to know. No peer pressure smell... here, man. No peer pressure here. <laughs> Absolutely peer pressure here. Smelling Not for me. Pack. So... Um, so that was uh, the, the the smelling do you, do of you, your do you smell your cards <laughs> conversation. Um, Nick also chimed in with, by the way, Kim, the sheriff isn't yawning; he's shouting, and this is in regards to what's being referred to as Sleepy Strange, the art <laughs> on the Sheriff Strange card, and uh, the art was shared in the Discord. Someone found the panel and, and shared it. It looks like he's shouting. It's still not great art. No, it's he's yawning. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So there was that. He's forever yawning sheriff now. That's right. Um, and then our friend Chris from the Ministry of Dice, also known as the True Mr. Six, weighed in and said, I didn't name who he said played Jimmy Woo when I told him that I, when I said that I was, uh, he was trying to goad me into a pop culture train wreck. And he said, it's not as much of a pop culture train wreck as you might think. So I said, okay, let's let the folks here weigh in. What Chris had said to me, because I didn't say it on the last podcast, was he said that John Krasinski <laughs> was um, was the the actor that played Jimmy Woo. But it's not. It's Randall Park. I was correct. I was correct that it was Randall Park. So um, 
I said, so fill us in. How does John Krasinski play into the Jimmy Woo conversation? And he included a YouTube link, which, Kim, we can put in the show notes. I don't think I watched this YouTube link. I didn't watch the link, but I saw the screenshot. Okay. So, um, so John Krasinski is in The Office. Okay, he's in the American version of The Office, not the UK version of The Office. Um, but I guess there's some kind of thing that goes back between John Krasinski and Randall Park where they pretend to be each other. So oh, okay. it's be- he said it's become a bit of a meme between the two actors and the link that we will be sharing with you, the YouTube video we'll be sharing with you, is a link of Randall Park in an office-themed video meme pretending to be John Krasinski. Okay. So there you go. Um, Pretending now, is not the same as being. In the mid, in the middle of that, uh, J- Jackalope Spam Nick piped up and said, you mean Dwight from Parks and Rec when I said John Krasinski. And, um, and again, I didn't watch Parks and Rec or The Office. Well, I tried to watch Parks and Rec, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. I watched like three or four episodes. Um, and Nick says, so I was trolling with belligerence and true Mr. Six is being all sneaky and is trolling. I dig it. So these are the types of conversations that you can participate in on our discord. <laughs> Weigh in <laughs> with gifts and images and smart people telling us things. And it's, it's fantastic. So you should join that. We also had Kim, the return of a missing mm-hmm. member of our podcast dice bag and i was wondering what was happening here because i went to the youtube today kim and guess whose comments we finally saw everyone's favorite hero donnie that's right everyone's favorite hero donnie has finally returned we haven't had a donnie comment in like i don't know like five episodes maybe entirely possible I'm not exactly sure. So Donnie says, I finally got my Secret Wars, so now I can go back to my bi-weekly favorite podcast. I was staying away from spoilers. And out of all the cards, I'm excited to use Super Rare Molecule Man with hashtag Rare Spider-Man forever. Sounds like an excellent combo, Donnie, and I'm 100% <laughs> supportive. I'm also excited for the Black Panther that has has the win con with the Fantastic Four, which is the Super Rare Black Panther. And I'm also excited for the origin packs. I like that they used alt art for them. He has also binged the last five episodes so that he can be caught up. We appreciate that, Donnie. I love your guys' content, and it killed me not to listen, but I truly wanted no spoilers with the new updated cards, because we did talk a little bit about the cards. Yeah. P.S. I love them. I think he means the cards. Oh. Although I do find my... (laughs) Well, he loves our content. So. Uh, He does find himself trying to find the affiliations... Um, uh, every card he looks at because they're in a different spot, right? The affiliation used to be at the top and now it's at the bottom. Uh, Donnie has weighed in on the sniffing of the cards. <laughs> he says, I don't sniff my cards, but thank you. when but... I played Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day, our group had quite a few people that said sniffing brings luck. I'm not sure if it ever worked. So, so I didn't know anything about sniffing bring luck. Bring luck. <laughs> I haven't heard that. Um, I just like the way they smell. And then he sent a bunch of laughing, crying emojis and said historic made up facts. And that's, I think, in rele- in uh, reference to last episode where we had our very special guest, Andy May, who talked about the um, oldest mall in America. And we said we love historic facts. So I said even if they're made up. But that one wasn't made up. That's actually true. <laughs> and that was our dice bag. Cool. So really appreciate everyone who participated and sent us a message and joined in on the conversation. And Chris, next time I will, I will make sure I give all of the message when I come out here so that, that uh, we don't have to settle all this in the discord comments. (laughs) All right. I think that's all we got, Kim. That is all we have. Yes. Anything we want to add? No. All right. Well, friends, dazzle us with your comments and uh, share your thoughts with us in all of the places that you can find us. So you can send us an email at triple D podcast at DM North.com. You can find us on all the socials, which include Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at DM North TV. You can watch live content for dice masters and other board games at twitch.tv forward slash DM North TV. 
You can find our recorded content, including a video slash audio version of this episode at youtube.com forward slash DM North TV. You can find our discord at DM North TV, which will be linked in the show notes and join our conversation there. And you can also at us on discord. Kim is at super K and I am at Joss stitch J O C E stitch. So until next time on a double, double and dice.